Good morning, everybody. I think it's still the morning. I can sense just now. I wanted to come in a bit earlier to hear the conversations from the CEO and to see the engagement and reaction from the audience because actually the most important people in any conference are the attendees, actually. And I feel sometimes when I sit here, I would like to sit there with you all and learn so much more. But today, from my um, session, just share a little bit on uh, Axiata and its group of companies and how we've moved along the journey of building a culture of innovation. And it really, for me, comes from three aspects or a trifactor of, of, of the journey is how do you bring the mindset? How do you build the capabilities? How do you move into the implementation and ensure that you're functioning in an ecosystem that allows you to succeed and fail and reinforce some of the learnings and thirdly, how do you measure? Um, which one do I need? This one. Okay. And how do you um, move? Because you have to measure the maturity of what is it of the culture of innovation you want. Firstly, I'd like to preface that the innovation from one organization may differ. So what is I'm going to come on today is more from the digital and analytics and also um, a little bit in how we play in the ecosystem. Like everything else, as a fellow practitioner in the HR world, it's like everything that we have to do has to have an intention. We have to be very intentional in what we do. And therefore, with this, I always find is how do we move alongside the business? How are we in HR, the business actually, to drive that uh, innovation? Recently, my uh, group risk and compliance department, when they open up the integrity month, I was so proud that culture is owned by another di division. Because a lot of the time they say, uh, CEO owns the culture, HR is the custodian. But how do we embed it in the business? So I'm just going to take a little bit of the time to go back to the ultimate, the heart of it, before we say innovation, is the culture. And like I said, everybody has their own worlds. I'm just sharing this slide, not because you can get all this in the public information, but because we are a little bit of a regional player, and you know that innovation requires diverse workforce, be it in gender, generations, capability, and everything else. And for some of us who have that diversity embedded in our business, that's already a must. I mean, you can do a lot of research about what are one of the capabilities that you require, and therefore, diverse workforce for creative ideation and robustness of solutioning is key. So I think this is more key from that. And then as coming from the HR lens is, how do I embed it in, uh, in our vision, our mission, and some of the strategic priorities that we have? And, and for me, it's like, okay, in all these pillars that I have, and we call it the ABCDE within the group people division, how do we embed and build in the people life cycle, the innovation mindset, the innovation capability, and therefore the measurement? So just coming back again, it's a very simple thing, but I think this is very key for us because we have very simple values, uncompromising integrity and exceptional performance. And therefore, if you think about innovation is we have to perform, we have to deliver. But compliance, regulation, and good governance has come in. We're a public listed company and most of our companies are and aspire to be. So we want to win, but not at all costs. And that is the heart of our culture. And we go on a tripod of what is our purpose, what is our brand, and therefore, what is our, what is our winning culture? I wanted to go a little bit to you uh, on the precept of what is our culture. We love to be mad, and that's Axiata, because we want to be model, modern, we want to be agile, and we want to be digital. And this links in, I was very taken by the conversation on sustainability on ESG. How do we build that digital inclusivity? And if we as a big organization can make a difference to it, I think it's cool. I'm not going to call out on all of you, but actually the hotel, they're serving us water in plastic bottles, right? So, you know, when we talk about ESG, how sensitive are we to the things that we apply daily? That's just being a little bit cheeky here. So modern is really both the tangible and intangible. Is your thinking modern? Are we pivoting enough? I'm sure us in the HR world, we've heard the word pivot a thousand times. Yesterday at the closing of my group people division thing, we talk about pivot, pivot, pivot. I think next year we have to find a different verb because I think we've pivoted this year. I think we need to measure what is the impact of all this pivot. 
And Agile is a way of working. Agile, as you all know, some of you have implemented Agile in a very highly scientific way, a very structured way, which is what I call the capital A. But some of our organizations don't need to do that level of Agile. So we try and come out again, what do we do? What do we mean by Agile? And, and therefore, digital, it's not because automation is the greatest, but how does it add value to what we do? And how do we use the data and therefore improve our processes and also give much more solutioning to our various stakeholders, particularly our customers? All of you know this, we all have had culture transformation and therefore leadership is key, uh, clarity is key. They say that the leaders that have the greatest conversation and transparency are the most effective these days. And how do you enable success? The idea is that when we hire somebody, the question should be, how do we make the person successful? How do we make our leader successful? And lastly is building the growth mindset. I think for most organizations, as I've said, we've had the big, great return and all the greats that's coming about is how do we go forward, build a growth mindset and get the results amidst all the headwinds of the challenging economic as well as financial sectors, apart from socio-political. One of the things that we find that, how do we measure the culture gap? We're quite lucky we've worked with a culture a change agent from the inception of designing into the transition that we've had and the transition that we're going to have again. And therefore, you know, you've heard about the culture of belonging. DEI is no longer diversity, equity and inclusion, it's diversity, equity, inclusion and belonging. And the other one is also about creativity. And I want to call this out because this is very, one of the important elements of, if you read anywhere, the 12 characteristics of an innovative culture. The culture of analysis, you want to innovate, you get the data, you know your maturity for that project, and go forward. And last of not, and not least is sometimes we go into analysis paralysis. We get the most perfect solution, we want all the analysis, but we don't go into action. And I think this is where I always say is, at 50-60%, you have to have the courage and take cal calculated risks and go forward. Because you can only perfect a moving solution, not a static one that's in your head. So therefore, for me, when Axiata, and they have already adopted some of it, but how do we string all the narrative together? I think it has to do with mindset. We have to enable our people to be innovative, because innovative is not just creating new things. Innovating, innovation is also about improving the current state, processes, products, services, and so much more. And how do we embed it as part of our DNA? I think that's key, because innovation is not project-based. Innovation translates into what we deliver to our customers and our various st stakeholders, including our people. So we leverage on these things called the collective brain. As an organization at the center is, I don't have operations at the corporate center. So not everything should be driven by corporate center. The idea of agility is how do we leverage on the capability across all our other organizations. So it could be led by somebody for me in Sri Lanka, my organization in Sri Lanka, be it uh, Dialog or Azeta Digital Lab. Super, super brainiac, software engineers, data analysts. So why not leverage on that? Because sometimes we have to get away from the mindset that's not created here. Uh, we've got to take away about the green monster, that because the collective success is better than an individual success. So we leverage a lot on collective brain. And in these projects, we measure the returns, we measure the impact into revenue, the EBITDA. So there is nothing fluffy about these things that we do. Um, the collective brain, one of the collective brain circles is actually our technology teams. So how do we bring, um, not harmonization, not standardization, but harmonization of the solutions that we deliver in the various markets, as well as um, how do we get the finances savings? Because we want our dollar to stretch as much as possible. So it's a, it's a deliverable measured for returns. How do we enable our people? So we have this virtual um, university we create that was launched in 2020, and we have eight academies. And it's really what we all are doing, virtual learning, bite size. But what I'm very keen about is to bring about two attention to two of the of academies, which is called the technology, as well as the digital. 
Because in those programs, we go towards nano degrees, um, micro, micro credentials. For example, my vision is to see that when you see somebody for Axiata, this is wow, they look and smell of people who know digital, who know analytics. So we've put through a program to touch all our 13,000 employees to be data citizens. And then you choose how far up on the seven steps do you want to go. Because you can then go from data citizen to data explorer, and then finally to data scientist. Is it in your career aspiration? But we feel that digital and analytics has to be embedded across the organization. So this is how we enable the people, we create the community, but we also have something that's called the Azeta Group uh, Analytics. And this is really bringing the capabilities at the center in terms of AI and machine learning. And the next one's of course, Metaverse. So the idea is that we bring conversations, we bring dialogue, we bring vocabulary, so that we as uh, citizens of the Azeta Group can speak knowledgeably, whether you be from HR, from finance, or even the engineers themselves. So it's really looking about how do we marry the human and the machine and everything in between is the middleware and also to understand what can we do. The great thing about this, it creates a community of about 250 data analysts across the group, but it also gives flexibility at the individual operating levels. So we bring knowledge. Knowledge is built not by us getting some frameworks. The way that we have learned recently, we had an AI summit. It was so cool. We had practitioners sharing with us use cases. So they were from AWS, they were from Microsoft, they were from Google. And really the learnings that we wanted was if we go into the journey, they share the use cases and how can we apply in our industry and for our clients. And also sometimes it's not what we can apply because we build digital connectivity. How can we improve that? And it was really, really cool. Um, and, and in a sense, it's like you get the theoretical framework and principles because we partner with IMD and everything else, but we get the practical application. And what was very good that we had our CEOs, we had our CXOs, and we had other people from all the cost of practitioners sitting in there. And that to me is really beginning of the embedment. So the next one is um, a little bit about how also in this, um, uh, um, we call this Asiata Certified Expert Center. So they all pick up the word culture. So I'm so glad because culture is owned across the organization and the levers that we use are maybe different. Because how many times have you gone to your business or to your partners and they said, oh, I want to build a culture of cost optimization, a culture of risk management, I say, ladies and gentlemen, please look from the eyes of our people. We have only one culture. From your discipline, what is the lever that you want to use? And what are the common behaviors that overlaps everything that the organization needs to do? Because I think you need, you need to mobilize for impact and consistency. So the culture of innovation is really now we measure. Because what we measure, we can improve and get better. So we have governance model, right? So if you go into the AI or you go into the agile, you need to be trained if you really want to go serious. Our organization in dialogue, uh, in, in various organizations, do build COEs, understand what is it for the local market, training, and how do you then continue with it? Measure the projects. So various organizations have different things. Pick up the issues, understand the resistance and then replicate. You just keep replicating. I see some of my old colleagues laughing here, so I'm a bit worried. I see some of my old colleagues from UEM group, from Asiata group, you know, it's nice to see um, my, my partners there. So what is the organization structure? What is our ways of working? And of course, you must always be defined by what is your company uh, vision. So that's how we feel that you have to have governance. Because then, you know, you want flexibility with some structure. I think we are not yet ready, at least for Axiata, to have complete flexibility like an amoeba. We can't. Last but not least, I think for me, on this side, is we have a program called LEAP, Learn, Engage, Accelerate and Perform. We have identified and used more than 500 projects and still measuring for maturity. What is our maturity in this? And I share those pictures there. There is an overall digital winner 
But there's also one that measures for people, because that's key in our innovation. And there's also one for collaboration. My God, next to pivot, collaboration is the next word, highly used words these days. The third one is empathy, right? So I think those are things that we do. So you can do so many categories depending on your organization, but you have to have somebody who is managing it from a structure side. The last five minutes, I want to talk about us. It's always sometimes when things don't happen, they always say, hey, Chow, what can you do? My people, did, uh, you know, can you change the culture? Can you give me training? I'm like, okay, here we go again. But never mind, it's a journey. And I think what has happened is that we have shown how effective our partnerships are um, these days. And that's something I'm very proud of. I'm, I'm always very driven by the people life cycle. So I go from, you know, attraction and recruitment, onboarding, all the things, la -dida, you all know, I'm not going to insult you. But, you know, but for me, key is how do you begin that journey? So therefore, we recently pivoted, or not pivoted, shh, we uh, enhanced our uh, people quality framework and said we must ensure that innovation is one of the competencies or the traits that we can identify early. I mean, listen, it's not always going to be correct because innovation, creativity is not easy to measure and conversations at an interview may not be the best, but at least it's a parameter. So we moved away from the word leadership and to leading. I actually don't believe in org charts because I today believe leadership is the power influence rather than organizational structure. So we've put that and we've put uh, strategic accountability, customer centric and agile part of it digital mindset as skills, and uh, end of 2021, we put sustainability as one of the traits we look for. Please don't ask me what the metrics we are, we use. I'm still trying to figure out what we can measure. And also, when we talk about sustainability, is E, S, and G. For an organization like ours, uh, I mean on uh, E.co board director, so we can measure some of the things. Under environment, it's very transparent and much there. You know, you build bamboo towers and everything else. But the E and S, the, the, the regulatory and the social, how do you connect? How do you really connect? And when we talk about DEI measurement, is it enough that you say, I have 50% women, 50% men? Okay, seriously. At the decision table, how many of us speak up? And generations, that's also very key. Our population is getting younger, right? So we, we, I feel that innovation as a little bit of where the DNA is, begins an acquisition. And this is also the same framework that we use for our talent development and intervention. So how do we partner? And we use Agile, right? So we have job description. How are you going to capture it in the job description? And then how do you link your job description to your KPI, right? It's like, because it's all quite static, stochastic. Some of us are very much more Lucky, I just met an ex-colleague of mine, he says, boss, we don't have KPIs, we just deliver. That's pretty cool. I'm not there yet, you know? So in the, in the meantime, how do I measure? How do I give them? And so it goes into your performance management and the aspirations of our new generation is career tracks. And where can we do when we do innovation? Um, so those are some of the things that we partner with. Um, Culture nudges, working with our culture partner recently. How do we nudge towards innovation? And um, how do we bring that at pace? And I think that's going to be a key survivability of next year. So in essence, for me, as I close, I know I've gone like a mad rabbit, right? <laughs> but it's like... But it's the same pace that we've been having since the pandemic, right? We all move like a mad rabbit. So it's like we're showing speed, uh, agility, and you know, I feel that HR has transformed so much. And from the perspective of some I speak for my group is um, onboarding. So the tower company, because we want to bring the experience, they're now using this, um, the goggles to have a virtual experience of going up the tower. Firstly, it's less hazardous, people don't fall off. Secondly, it makes it faster. Thirdly, from a business angle, it allows us to do performance management of the tower uh, effectiveness. And most of us today, of course, I think, use um, the crawler because we've got a gazillion job askers. But the last thing about culture of innovation is we need funding. 
boss, you're asking me to do all these sexy things, and the first budget you cut is HR. You know what I mean? So I think that's a little bit where we stretch, stretch what we have. I mean, some of the young ones that we have have pivoted Power BI like nobody does. Because they say, you know, we want HR to be, um, I want data-driven matters, Oli. You know, I want this to make a business decision. So I think some of those are exciting things that we're doing. Um, this year, we took our HRA, uh, HR assessment, where it is for a digital assessment in HR. So that measures our investments, it measures our results. I totally believe, and this is my mantra, if you see me ever on my LinkedIn, is, you know, is the life at Axiata is really about making an impact. And about making an impact, you need to measure it a little bit. So next year, uh, at one of my regional conferences, we had this thing, Professor Simmons, um, about the topic was how to make your CFO happy. Actually, it's how can I get the funding to make the investments, and therefore I can add value from the people, um, agenda, and businesses. Thank you so much for listening to me. I saw a wonderful agenda. Enjoy. If I don't speak to you, take care and happy holidays. Thank you. Thank you so much, Oli. Any questions for Oli in case anybody wants to ask a question? We're happy to take that. Yes, Hi, sir. Uh, my name is Matthew. I'm from uh, Digital Detox Malaysia. And uh, I have a question, uh, you know, especially when you said uh, marrying the machine and the human, I want to know whether digital detox plays a role in sustainability Abs for the individuals. Absolutely. And that's my biggest challenge. Just like I was telling you, it's December, and I'm still getting um, requests for meetings all the way to December 27. You can't digital detox, right? And... I'll share you that I, I got recently in trouble with my board audit committee. They wanted to have a meeting on a public holiday. I did not realize that he was in the CC for a logistics meeting. So bravely I said, I will not attend this, and if I have to attend, do not invite any of my staff. I respect their private space and blah, blah, blah. And then I'm like, there was silence, you know? And then my secretary says, Oli, the chairman of board audit committee is in the CC. But he's a good friend. So I was telling him, listen, we have to walk the talk. So I don't think there's enough yet of senior sponsorship yeah, yeah. that's actually telling us, cut out the digital All detox. Right, you. Do you know? So I won't lie to you and say, that's still a challenge in change management. If you've got a formula, please share with me. <laughs> Thank you. All right, great, everyone. Let's hear it for Oli once again. And very, very exciting session there.